some impact after Draghi's comments. So uh, why don't we see what the experts okay. have to say about these markets. On the technicals, we've got Larry Shover, Chief Investment Officer at SFG Alternatives. And on the fundamentals, we've got Drew Mattis, Senior U.S. Economist over at UBS. Drew, you heard Mario Draghi's comments this morning. What's your take? You believing they're coming in now to buy government bonds? Uh, well, I mean, I think they've already promised it, so they have to do it. If, if they were not to deliver on this, uh, the European crisis we've had to date would, would probably look like small potatoes. Uh, so he's kind of stuck. He's promised, and now he's got to deliver. Yeah, he certainly does. And uh, uh, let's get your take, Larry Shover. Is this a buy, this market? It really is. I am cautiously constructive, but let's look at this. I mean, uh, we had the earnings season coming up right upon us, and I think bears are very nervous because it's not the negative catalyst that most people were thinking. I mean, they've been walking down expectations every single day. So I do think this is a buy right now, short term. Hey, that's a curious point. In other words, companies have been guiding down, and yet the market's still a buy. Uh, I tell you what, um, Drew Mattis, you're the, you're the economist here. Explain that to us because that, that sounds like a real conundrum. Well, I think it's people living in hope. Uh, you know, if you pump enough liquidity into anything, the money's going to find a home. Uh, and I think that's what we're seeing now. And, and you know, Jonathan Golub, uh, who's the uh, senior equity strategist at UBS, you know, his view is that, that the pop we're going to get is, is QE related, uh, that the underlying earnings numbers aren't different. And so you're getting multiple expansion. But the question is, you know, why should you believe multiple expansion in the long run uh, on effectively a liquidity event from central banks? Do you believe last night's debate gave any extra oomph to today's pop? I mean, it's been known Wall Street is a bigger supporter of Governor Mitt Romney, and he did have a strong showing last night. Could that be a factor in today's market improvements? Uh, I, I think that that might be the case. I think it's a little too early, though. I mean, uh, I, I do think, you know, UBS has our own election model. Our election model is showing the two in a dead heat. Uh, it has been showing them in a dead heat. So uh, I'm more inclined to believe my own model than, than uh, one of the ones from the major polling agencies. Hey, what's your model based on, Drew? Uh, unemployment and 10-year uh, and, uh, yields. And explain uh, to the viewers uh, how that works in your model. Uh, well, I mean, the whole idea is simply that if uh, unemployment's falling, it, it helps the incumbent. Uh, but 10 year yield should be rising as unemployment's falling because that shows that there's an expectation that the economy is getting in better shape. Uh, that's exactly what we saw when Reagan was president going in for his second term. Larry, what's your take? Do you think last night's debate had any impact on today's market? You know, I really do think it did, because I don't think most people thought that um, Romney would come out swinging the way he did and actually just stopped talking about goals, but actually told about his plan a little bit more. So I do think it did give an extra boost, because most media outlets are, are just predicting an Obama victory. So, yeah, I do think it had something to do with it. Yeah, and of course, we saw the future starting to tick up last night, Larry. Um, Drew Mattis, let me ask you, in this environment where you think there is inflation on the way, central bank buying, you've also said... Uh, that you think multiples will expand. Talk the viewers through why that's the case and then which sectors you buy. Uh, well, you know, I'm just stealing from the, from the good people I work with at UBS, but, you know, the, the, the multiple expansion story is really one just based on liquidity. Uh, the money's got to find a home. Uh, in terms of what sectors, uh, you know, we like home builders. Uh, you know, that's probably the one that stands out most in my mind because uh, as an economist, we're actually much more upbeat on housing. Uh, and we think housing is going to uh, drive things uh, a little bit higher in the coming year. And other sectors or even asset classes you're feeling less inclined to invest in right now, really avoiding? Uh, I mean, you know, government bonds are not something that I would see a lot of value in. Uh, our our uh, asset allocation team out of London doesn't really like government bonds, and I am inclined to agree with them. Uh, whereas, you know, real estate seems to be one that would uh, capture any sort of inflation pressures that might emerge. Hey, uh, uh, Larry, how does the Drew Mattis uh, plan jibe with your own uh, trading strategy? Well, my strategy right now is, like, look at what's been performing well lately. I mean, energy was up 10.5% last quarter. And on the other hand, we have volatility so cheap right now. I mean, the implied volatility in XLE, for instance, 2%. That's about as low as it's been in years. If you want to, like, hedge your exposure to the stock market and me be cautiously confused, it's a great time to be buying, like, out of the money puts against that because, good grief, we're, I do believe we're going to continue to rally without air pockets, not without air pockets, but it's a great time to be hedging some of your exposure and getting into the equity market. Hey, you know, you talk about hedging. Um, Drew, what about hedging against inflation? What do you buy for that? Uh, well, I mean, I think that's where the real estate play comes in. Uh, you could look at tips, but I mean, tips, uh, you know, it, it depends on how expensive they are on any given day. Uh, so buying inflation protection directly from the U.S. Treasury is never, never a bad idea if you think the values are right. 
Uh, and then you can look towards commodities, and, and certainly our commodity team is structurally bullish on gold, and I, and I think that that's probably uh, the right call given the role that a lot of people believe gold plays. Before we go, I just want to bring Larry back in for a moment. Larry, clearly you like this market. As you just said, you're, bu you're buying it. But how much are you still sitting in cash? Are you keeping some on reserve because you're not ready to go full force? You know, the, the way the market work, is working right now, we're at 1460 in the S&P, a very important point. If we remain above 1460 at a meaningful close above that, the next, the next call is going to be 1500, no doubt about it. I mean, people are searching for yield. But don't be dismayed. I mean, we're, we're going to see air pockets. If we see 1405, 1410 in the S&P, a very good time to get in. However, I will caution everybody, if we do have a meaningful close below 1405, 1360 will be the next stop. It seems like there's a lot of tailwind right here with Central Bank and with our earnings right now. Well, thank you both so much. Covering the bases, technicals, and fundamentals. That's Larry Shover, Chief Investment Officer at SFG Alternatives, and Drew Mattis, Senior U.S. Economist over at UBS.